More areas of the Queen Mary are reopened, such as the isolation ward, and I hear the first class swimming pool will reopen. All of this and more on this September 2023 update of the RMS Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. I'm your host, Alex the Historian, a huge fan of the Queen Mary. I make documentaries about the history and importance of the ship, and my construction updates not only provide insight into the ongoing refurbishment of the ship, but also to dispel the doom and gloom that newspapers were spewing out to the public during the three-year closure of the ship due to COVID. And I must give thanks to my friend Chris from LMG Vids, who has filmed the entire update for you all to see today. Just a quick recap. No, the ship was never going to sink or capsize. No, the ship is not sitting on concrete or ballasted with concrete. She actually floats in the water and will rise and fall with the tide. No, her structure is not damaged or heavily corroded, nor does her hull show any signs of advanced corrosion due to the salt water. The Queen Mary structure has been deemed by marine engineers to be in good shape both inside and out, and her hull has been protected by a sacrificial cathodic anode system for the last five decades. The Queen Mary always turned a profit, but in the last 30 years, previous companies that leased the ship preferred to pocket the profits and neglect the ship's maintenance, which is why she wasn't in very good shape. But in 2021, the city of Long Beach took back control of the Queen Mary, and ever since February of 2022, the ship has been undergoing restoration, which will continue for many years to come. I delve deeper into all of this information in previous repair update videos. I have a short playlist of them, so be sure to check that out to get accurate information on the true condition of the Queen Mary. And now, on to the news. Work on the main hall on promenade deck is completed, and the area looks as new and fresh as she did in 1947 when she returned to passenger service after serving as a troop ship in World War II. When the ship reopened this past April after a three-year closure, the first merchandise shop to reopen with the ship was the former first-class library on the port side of the main hall. But most recently, the former first-class drawing room on the starboard side has finally reopened and it sells lots of new merchandise that is much more relevant than the products that were on the shelves back in 2020. Credit must be given to the ship's caretakers, Evolution Hospitality, for ditching the 1990s lineup of merchandise and providing items that reflect the modern consumer. And I hear rumors that even more merchandise is on the way, stuff that might be more exciting than what we see here. Oh, by the way, the items that look like ship funnels are meant to be trash cans, and yes, you can buy them, but uh, they aren't exactly cheap. In the center shop of Main Hall, new curiosities were being set up in the windows for display, we ran into the ship's ambassador, Commodore Everett Horde, and he told us that his personal collection of Queen Mary memorabilia is being set as an exhibit in this space, so be sure to check it out on your next visit. Hurricane Hillary had recently passed over Queen Mary, and Evolution Hospitality still had its hands full with performing 30 years worth of maintenance that previous greedy corporations refused to do whenever they pocketed the profits of the ship. As a result, some rainwater leaked above the starboard doorway of the promenade, and a piece of the ceiling had to be replaced. Work continues now on finishing the patch job. Just outside of the main hall, on the starboard promenade, the Promenade Café has finally reopened after undergoing a remodel that has lasted well over four years. Granted, the remodel was on hiatus for three of those years. This restaurant is not original to the ship. The Promenade Walkway would have continued further aft from here. But this little eatery does serve up some delicious breakfast and lunch, and the nearby Chelsea's Chowder House takes over for lunch and dinner. Forward from the main hall, the former first-class lecture room, now called the Heritage Room, has reopened and is playing short videos that discuss the ship's importance and history. The forward outdoor promenade, which wraps around the observation bar, has finally been restored to its original look. The teak decks in this area are original to the ship and have received some TLC. The plexiglass windbreakers that used to mar the beauty of this area are not returning, and in their place, new teak handrails have been installed. But Evolution Hospitality, if you're listening, and I know sometimes you are, you have to get someone out here as soon as possible to apply a different type of weather sealant to the wood. 
The handrails have only been on here for a few weeks, and they are already turning gray, when the wood should have remained a brown color. It is essential that all the wooden outdoor handrails and decks be properly sealed against the weather. You paid to have all this lovely work done, you don't want it all turning gray and rotting out. The forecastle deck at the bow of the ship remains closed to visitors due to the rotten decks installed in 1994. Some rust abatement work was done on the machinery equipment, but ultimately the decks must be replaced before people can be allowed to explore the bow. Further amidships, the first class main lounge was closed to prepare it for a special event. This room was recently restored and all its fine bronze sculptures and reliefs were properly shined up and the rare wood paneling was cleaned and polished. It's really a shame that this room, located right in the busiest part of the ship, is underutilized and always reserved for special events, when it should really play a key role as the central lounge and entertainment venue for visitors. Afternoon tea should be served here, in between scheduled live entertainment on the ship. You have the illusionist Aidan Sinclair, put him on the stage a few times a day, and charge a premium for people to see him perform while they enjoy some tea, coffee, and a few pastries. This will help provide visitors with that ocean liner experience I discussed in my last update. People come to the Queen Mary to see public spaces like this, but as long as the doors remain closed, people will have fewer reasons to visit. In my last video, I mentioned how the Queen Mary could be used to provide an immersive ocean liner experience. Evolution Hospitality, you could start by selling all-inclusive packages that are scheduled on weekends. The packages could include price of admission and provide vouchers for meals, entertainment, and maybe a tour or two. And you could sell a single day package or a weekend package for those who intend to book a room on board or nearby. But the goal is to find ways to keep people on the ship all day long and into the early evening. You don't want them to leave the ship to find food or entertainment elsewhere. As we exit the aft end of the promenade, we can see that maintenance crews are busy doing repairs and repainting of the stairs. This is important because previous operators of the ship had neglected the various outdoor staircases around the ship, and the salty air is starting to corrode them. And I must say, these workers are doing a fine job. You might notice that some of the decks my friend is walking on are made of plywood, while others are made of hardwood. It's important to remember that the city of Long Beach is not spending a dollar of taxpayer money to restore the ship, because frankly, very few people would support that use of city funding. Instead, all the money going into the Queen Mary either comes from the ship's profits, fees generated by the nearby Carnival Cruise Terminal, or other private sources. As a result, Evolution Hospitality does not have a massive budget to work with, so all the work being done is going at a slow but steady pace. When the rotten hardwood decks need immediate replacement, temporary plywood decks must suffice for a while so that visitors can still enjoy the ship. But Evolution Hospitality fully intends to return the decks to hardwood, and all they need from us is some patience and understanding. Now, about the Carnival Cruise Terminal fees. The cruise terminal sits on land that belongs to the Queen Mary, so a fee is charged for its use, and every year, over $2.5 million in fees goes towards the Queen Mary's annual maintenance budget. The Mary's maintenance budget costs about $5 million per year, so up until now, the cruise terminal has helped cover half of that cost. You can see in this footage that the Port of Long Beach has kept their word and worked to expand the cruise terminal to make it capable of accommodating two ships at once instead of just one is underway. By increasing the capacity, the cruise terminal will soon have the potential to generate $5 million per year in fees that will go directly to paying for the Queen Mary's annual maintenance. That's right, that means the Queen will have a guaranteed income to support her annual upkeep. Down on B deck aft, the isolation ward has finally reopened. The bulkhead walls have been repainted with the same color scheme as before. The portholes have all been cleaned, and the flakes of lead paint in the nurse's sink have been cleaned up. This area is looking a lot more pleasant than it did three years ago. As we move up to sun deck, we can see that the tacky wedding gazebo located on what used to be the tennis court has finally been removed. 
This area looks so much better without it. Eventually, the deck will need hardwood installed here again, but that project might be tackled with the rest of Sun Deck. Work on repainting of the superstructure has advanced quite well on the port side, but on the starboard side, they've only just begun the repaint work. Water and weather is a ship's worst enemy, and keeping the superstructure properly coated in paint will help prevent the steel from corroding. On the starboard side, we can walk underneath Lifeboat 3, which is one of two remaining lifeboats on the ship. Lifeboat 2, which is a smaller accident boat, also remains on the port side of the ship. These are among just a handful of lifeboats that were spared when the rest were removed from the ship by crane. Their deterioration, due to 30 years of neglect, was so advanced they really couldn't be saved. But these two lifeboats, plus the one sitting on the dock, are slated for restoration and preservation. And someday, probably several years from now, the Davits will all be restored and then replica lifeboats can be hung from them to once again give the ship her classic look. But right now, there are more pressing priorities. Just above Sun Deck sits the Sports Deck, so named because passengers could play various games and sports on this level. Sports Deck is only open intermittently. It was not open on the day my friend was filming this footage. This is because Sports Deck is suffering from lots of rotten wood deck planks, and repair and restoration are underway. You can also see that some of the wooden staircases are so badly rotten they will need to be replaced, and eventually, they will. On Sun Deck port side, my friend Jamie was present during a live stream that my friend Steve was doing, and this was just the day after Hurricane Hillary, or what was left of it, had blown through. Jamie found that some areas of the midship deck were flooded with rainwater. Pooling water is a bad thing for a ship. Here, my friend Chris is visiting the ship just two weeks later, and all the rotten 1994 teak wood decks were torn out, and now the decks are covered with temporary plywood. Again, this is only temporary. Eventually, all the outdoor decks on the ship will get all new hardwood, but just keep in mind that this is a very expensive project, and money is tight and must be prioritized. Previous leaseholders of the ship would have just ignored the problem and let it get worse. Now we go back inside the ship. We're walking aft, down B deck, past the guest staterooms. You can see that even more of the horrible green-tinted fluorescent lights have been replaced with warm white LED lamps, helping to make the ship feel warm and welcoming. Here we are on B deck, starboard side aft, an area that has been receiving a major refurbishment. You can see the Bakelite handrails have been cleaned. The old floral pattern carpet has been replaced with a more regal solid red carpet, and the wood paneling has been cleaned and polished giving it a brighter glow in the new warm light. It would be wonderful if this new red carpet would replace all the aging carpets in the stateroom corridors. Continuing aft, we get to the second class forward staircase lobby, where original 1947 corkoid floors have recently been restored and the ceiling lamps repaired. The entire second class area of B deck is looking better than it has in almost 50 years. Here is a peek into a former second-class stateroom. As you can see, management has been hard at work refreshing all of the rooms aboard this classic liner. Every room that is available to book has had the carpets cleaned or replaced, the room has been deep cleaned, has had plumbing issues fixed, mattresses replaced, and brand new bed sheets and pillows installed. And all the hotel room doors have had state-of-the-art door locks installed. It's my belief that the former third and second class rooms, such as this one, could really benefit from a modern interior redesign for hotel guests seeking fresh and contemporary rooms, while the old first class wood paneled rooms can remain with their classic look and sold at a premium price for those looking for the full 1930s art deco immersion. And here's another cool surprise. It seems management has noticed all the attention the first class swimming pool has gotten and decided they could improve the view by repairing all the lights in the pool room and putting two original pool room chairs on display at the bottom of the stairs. I must say this was a great move on the part of Evolution Hospitality because at the end of my Queen Mary swimming pool video I mentioned that right now funds are being allocated to more immediate projects on the ship and we may not see this pool room open for several years. 
But management probably felt that at the very least, they could light up the room the way it should be and give people a better view. Oh, and that's not all. My friend Jamie was here the other day filming the pool room entrance for his channel, and he actually spoke to a maintenance worker who was recently working in this room. The crewman said that management is looking at ways to spruce up the room, and by this time next year, visitors will be able to enter the room and view it from the balcony. A full refresh of the room might be a long way off, but this is still very good news for people who just want a better view than from behind plate glass. Outside the ship, the second annual Halloween celebration, called Shacktoberfest, is being set up in part of the parking lot. They're even using some of the abandoned fronts of the condemned London Town shopping area as a backdrop for this year's event. This seasonal event might be a bit out of place next to the Queen Mary, but it helps generate lots of money that will go towards the ship's restoration. One last random thing is that around the ship, authentic artifacts from the ship's seagoing career have been pulled out of storage, dusted off, and placed on display. This antique fire extinguisher is original to the ship and is sitting on its rightful fire extinguisher pedestal. Don't worry, it's been properly fastened down so it won't be easily stolen. Nevertheless, let's hope someone keeps an eye on these artifacts. It's wonderful to have them around and on display. Before I end this update, something interesting happened on the Queen Mary. All of this footage you saw was filmed on Thursday, September 7th, one of the slower days of the week for the ship. I had my friend Chris doing all the filming for me since I live a thousand miles away in Northern Oregon. But Chris does not know his way around the ship, so we both hop on a Discord call so I can see what he's doing and give him precise directions for where to go and what to film. I have Chris go to the B-deck third-class staircase on the forward end of the ship because I wanted him to film the former entrance to the synagogue, which today is simply an abandoned broom closet. And this is what happened. Uh, synagogue says it's nothing. Nothing. Yeah. What the hell was that? That was weird. Someone like whispered in my ear. Did you all catch that? Chris heard a voice in his ear, and in fact I heard the same voice through the phone call, although his Sony camera didn't pick it up. He backed away from the door, declaring he heard a noise in his ear, and just as he says that, this appears. What the hell was that? That was weird. Definitely very eerie. Is it weird to say that? I feel like someone's like following me around. It's really fr freaking strange. I don't know what's going on. All right, folks, that does it for this update. The next one will likely be in December, and then following that update will be a recap of all the changes aboard the Queen Mary in 2023. Please remember that this update today does not encompass all of the changes or repairs. You have to go back and watch my previous updates. I have a whole playlist of them or you can wait for the recap. But if you feel like not much has been done on the ship, then I suggest you watch the other updates. I can't stress that enough. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to give this video a like, comment below to share your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel for more updates and documentaries about the Queen Mary and the Age of Steam.